favorites. So when I did the AliExpress haul video, I promised I would come back and show you guys many of these. Now, this you've already seen. Um, this is my second time ordering this pad, and I like it decently well. So I will link the Door Art Watercolor Round review for you guys. You have also seen this. This is just the Paul Rubens Cotton Rag Watercolor Pad, just with a different cover on it. So I'm actually not going to talk about these at all today. I'm going to link them in the cards. I hope you guys will check them out and let me know what you think. But we've already talked about these, so we don't really need to talk about them. Instead, we're going to talk about some of the newer stuff that came from AliExpress, including the My Rima, I believe, My Rina, Martina, something like that. I got to look it up. Watercolor rounds in a metal tin and I have no idea when this got bent up like that. As well as the Paul Rubens paper that has gold flecks in it. As well as this is supposed to be mixed media paper. So um, we're going to just kind of work our way through all three the way I normally do when I do watercolor paper tests where we kind of just try to make some mud. So this adorable little shuriken of pink is actually meant to help you open or remove pages from your watercolor blocks. Usually I use a palette knife for this. Before I used to use an X-Acto blade, but really a palette knife is the way to go. You could also use a, um, a bone folder, like the kind we use when we're making zines. You could use this as a bone folder, like the kind we use when we're making zines. It would basically serve the same purpose. You could probably use it when doing origami to help have really nice, crisp, clean fold. But I'm going to go ahead and I like that I could like hang a little something from that. And then I could hang it from the wall and it would be handy. I'm going to do that. But I'm going to go ahead and put this over to the side. This came free with that pad of Paul Rubens paper that you guys saw. When I ordered it from Amazon, it did not come with this. So I guess you only really get this nifty little device if you order from um, the actual Shanghai Alwyn Art Materials listing on AliExpress. So I'll try to grab that for you guys because it's kind of neat and it was a neat freebie. So I went on the AliExpress to see if I could actually find this and uh, get a price for you guys as well as a correct name. No, but it kind of looks like it's my Trina. So I'm going to try one more time. I'm sure one of you will let me know down in the description below or in the comments below and I'll be like, duh, Becca. But for some reason, it's just not meaning anything to me today. And watercolor paper is one of the more generic terms to look up. Yeah, no, I even tried signing in and uh, I ran into some errors there. But we'll go ahead and take a look at this. And I promise in the description, I'll tell y'all what it is, where I got it from, and what I paid if that listing is still available. So this watercolor paper comes in a metal tin, which would make it pretty travel friendly. Um, I have played around with Hannah Mule's watercolor postcards that also came in a metal tin. This one is a uh, 300 GM, which is about 140 labs. They, uh, labs, <laughs> sorry, 140 pounds. <laughs> uh, they're about 10 centimeters across the so smaller watercolor rounds. You get 30 of them. They have a fine finish on them. They're 25% cotton, and I'm not always super hot on mixed content papers. And they promise German paper pulp, which I, I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess that's good. I didn't have a problem with the Chinese paper pulp I used when I used Paul Rubens. So I don't, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, inside we do receive our rounds. It does seem like they might be upside down in the tin. This does seem more, ah, oh, y'all won't be able to really see, but this seems more like the correct surface rather than this. Uh, but perhaps we could use one side like a hot press and one side like a cold press. We'll have to try that out. What I don't like is that in order to make the tin, which supposedly contains 30 of these little rounds, to make it seem more full, you get that. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. Also, something I kind of don't like, I have, a mixed, I have mixed feelings about it, okay? 
Uh, the tin is a lot larger than the paper you actually get. You know, I am petty. I want to see if this is actually 10 centimeters. I think the tin is 10 centimeters. Maybe not the... Yeah, it's a little... Sh well, okay, come on. I better be fair. Let's be fair. Okay, all right. It is 10.4 centimeters. So, you know, that is the truth. That is how it is. As, a, as an American who's used to inches... Um, it is sometimes hard for me to envision what 10 centimeters looks like. I wasn't expecting 10 inches. I was expecting a little bit bigger, but they are awfully cute. And, you know, if I want bigger, I do have the Dora Art Pad. So this is the first one we're going to take a look at. I'm going to set it aside more gently this time. And we'll take a look at our next watercolor offering. All right, so now we have the Paul Rubens paper. And this is cool because it has a bit of a glitter or a shimmer effect, depending on which kind you get. Now, the listing on AliExpress does say it should be 100% cotton, so it should be pretty similar to the other Paul Rubens pad we got, other than, or I have reviewed here on the channel, other than the fact that it's a little bit shimmery. And there are three different types. There is the purple finish, which is fine grain. There is the coarse grain, and I believe this is the coarse grain. And then there is a medium grain that comes in pink packaging. I do wish they offered other options for the sparkle sparkles, but I like like bigger chunks of glitter, basically, as someone who likes glitter. But instead of just talking to you guys about it, let's take a look at it again. So it comes in this protective plastic sleeve, which I do appreciate. You can indeed see this is coarse grain once I actually get it out. And what you guys unfortunately will not be able to see is there is like a mica finish to it where it really does sparkle. It is very cute. And I'm it's making me feel a little bit, you know, a little bit like I can't live up to how cute it is. A little anxious, a little bit of performance anxiety. I'm trying to find how many pieces you get. I think you get 20 if I am reading that correctly. And I'm probably not, so let me know. But I'm excited. Ah, it's even glittery on the back. I'm excited about this one. I don't know if they dipped it in something. I don't know if the sparkle is part of the paper. I really wish you guys could see the sparkle because it's really cute. You're just going to have to take my word on it, but I'm excited about this one. This one would be good for commissions because then the person getting the original can actually see the sparkle sparkle. And I'm all about finding ways to try and make my art a little more special. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our final paper for today. Actually, before we do that, I just remembered I did not tell you the guys, did not tell you guys the prices. Sorry. All right, so these range from what they refer to as 8K to 32K. Not really seeing anything on here to tell me which K this is, but this is the 13.5 by 19.5 centimeter paper. So it's about five by seven. I believe I got the middle size, so I probably paid the middle price. And these range from 716 to 1478. With the one I ordered, there we go, being probably $14.25. That seems like an amount I would pay. All right, now we can move on to our final contestant, which is this. This is 25 pieces of craft watercolor painting paper sketch, hand painting, aquarelle, watercolor paper, pad drawing, paper art, painting supplies. And what I liked about this is it is a, supposedly, it is a mixed media paper. I also love toned hand paper. And I was really hoping that this would be, I, I was hoping it would have a little bit more of a surface tooth to it. Not gonna lie, cause I do like me some tooth. It is probably a cellulose paper being a mixed media paper. It's a thinner paper because it's 200 gram, which is about, I would say, 90 pound. But you guys let me know that's probably not a very accurate conversion. It is made by Shanghai Jinyang Art Materials Co. Limited. 
and it is 25 centimeters across. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. And the 25 across is the smaller. <laughs> it's, it's basically wrapped in a page protector, y'all. Um, not that that really makes a difference. Okay, so it being 25 centimeters, it is the smaller size, so I probably paid $8.66. There we go. I didn't want to ruin, you know, the, the amazing packaging because I probably will pop it right back in later. Yeah, sadly, this has no tooth. It's a little bit thinner than Strathmore's um, Tone Tan Mixed Media Paper or Tone Gray or Tone Blue, which is fine. A little thinner, it's fine. But my complaint is I want some tooth. Give me the tooth. I can handle the tooth. I don't know if you will take watercolor so well. We will try, but I am hoping you'll take color pencil because I'd like to play with you with color pencil, but really I would have liked to play with you with watercolor. So these are the three papers. That's a bowie hair, sorry. These are the three papers we're gonna be taking a look at today. All three of them came from AliExpress. I have been pretty impressed with what I've seen of Chinese art supplies over there. You gotta be kind of careful with AliExpress. And generally, I keep my eye on something for a long time and I kind of wait for a couple of my friends over on the paint box to say whether or not they're any good. But I also like paying it back and occasionally reviewing something they haven't had a chance to check out yet so that I can let them know whether it's any good or not. So, you know, joining a friendly online art community can be a great way to discover affordable, accessible art supplies. Speaking of, all three of these were purchased out of pocket. If you guys enjoy the work I do and you wanna help me continue to do this kind of work, please consider joining me over on Patreon because pretty much everything I review on the channel is paid for out of pocket unless I say otherwise. And I will always let you guys know right up front at the start of the video. And honestly, to my knowledge, AliExpress doesn't just send stuff out to people, so there you go. The only sponsorship this channel receives are my amazing patrons. So if you want to help me to continue to do these kinds of reviews, please consider joining me at patreon.com slash natosoup. If you join me, you'll not only get early access to videos like this one, but you'll also get access to my tutorials. I've been moving my tutorials to Patreon only. I've been kind of thinking about doing YouTube memberships and I've been considering putting them up behind a paywall on coffee as well. So if you like my tutorials, you might want to throw a couple bucks my way every month and that way you'll get access to them. So for today's review, what I'm basically going to do is I'm basically just going to throw a lot of paint on these papers, throw a lot of waters on these papers and see what they do. I call this my mud test. I'm also looking to see if unstretched, unsecured, if these papers have any issues with buckling, cockling, rippling. That's something you definitely want to know before you start a painting and since they are rounds, it does make it a little harder to attach it to a surface. You could tape it but it you know you're basically just kind of attaching it it's still gonna buckle and ripple because you're not stretching it so that's definitely something I want to be aware of if it handles water funny if it handles pigment funny now is a great time for me to find that out if I like what I see if it's not abysmal then later on I'll do a follow-up field test where I actually try to create something on like an illustration on these papers. Now, I may be moving my tutorials over to Patreon, but I do intend on keeping my field tests open to the public. And I do often do a little bit of tutorializing while I do my field tests. So we're not totally moving everything behind a paywall. We're just moving a lot of things behind a paywall.
So I think this is the part of the review I'm going to do in time lapse because it does tend to take a while and I know I talk a lot, but I don't know if I talk that much. So what I think is going to happen, and I will narrate over this in post to keep you guys informed, and there will also be a transcript down in the description below with links and, you know, an overview of everything we've discovered together, etc. I'm going to do one at a time. I'm going to move the others off camera, just off to the side, and I'm going to try to cycle them out. And this is going to allow me to work more quickly than I would otherwise be able to work. And since we're painting on Chinese papers, I thought we could paint with some American paints. This is my Da Vinci mixing palette. I happen to really like this palette a lot. I reviewed it a while back. So what I and uh, this is the palette I think I'm going to use to make here. some mud today. Is that I just slathered the paper with water and paint and I provided no support. I really tried to saturate it as much as possible. And you'll see as I add water and paint why I call it the Danger Pringle. It definitely has a tendency to kind of arch up. Now it does dry mostly flat with no support. All I did was a little bit of water control on this first layer. So with the Paul Rubens paper, I did pretty much the same thing. I just slathered the paper with water and paint. I really tried to add as much as possible to get it to bend, buckle, and curl. And while it does curl up, as you guys will see, it did also dry mostly flat with only a slight curl to it. Ah, there you go. You see it start to buckle up. I do think if you were to support it in some way using washi tape around the sides or maybe masking tape on the back, you would have less or fewer issues with this curling. And this really mostly happens when we really add a lot of water to the paper. And the shimmer is still slightly visible through the paints. Now, the funky pizza is where things really get kind of weird and messed up. The paper really kips and buckles with this amount of water and paint. At best, you could handle this paper like a very light mixed media paper. It's lighter than Strathmore's Tone Tan, Tone Gray, etc. mixed media paper, but it can't take nearly as much water. There's no tooth to this paper either. It's more like a hot press than a cold press, and paint and water just sit on the surface until they evaporate off. And this thing curled all I mean dried all curled up So all three of these have had a chance to dry out overnight. Our Danger Pringle has flattened itself out. The Paul Rubens paper dried a little bit kipped, but keep in mind, none of these papers were supported. None of these papers were stretched. It has a good chance of drying flat if I just taped it down. And then we have our pizza. Our pizza, which dried about like you would expect it to. So I am going to do another layer of mud today. I did lose my notes from yesterday. Fortunately, I've been narrating most of my thoughts and my notes, so it's not like you guys are missing out on anything. But the transcript is just going to be a little bit different from what I'd originally planned, and that's okay. We're okay. So for layer two of mud, I am still going to use the American Da Vinci palette because why not? 
And uh, I'm going to do that in time We're on a second day mud test, day two, layer two with this paper. The water seems to mostly stay on the surface. It does take wet into wet decently well, and it always reverts to its Danger Pringle final form. This is probably fine for light watercolor. Size is definitely kind of a restriction with this one. And again, I let it fully dry for an entire day before we move on to our third and final layer on the Danger Pringle. We're back at it with the funky pizza. Unsecured, this paper is a mess. It's very difficult to control buckling with this much water and it's difficult to control paint application when the paper behaves this way. I basically just slap paint down. I didn't even try to control it. I'm going to give this paper a chance to stabilize using the hyperlapse and then I'm gonna move it to another room to fully dry. I really feel like this one is not for watercolor. Pigments move with additional layers and it's difficult to control a lot of water on this paper. A lighter hand is recommended for best results. So day two, test two of the Paul Rubens shimmer paper. Unsecured, this paper buckles a lot with the second layer. In this state, it's very difficult to control the watercolor. I'll give it time to stabilize and then move it to another room. The colors are vibrant while wet and color diffuses easily. This paper seems to love granulation and you can really get some pretty layer effects, much like the non-iridescent Paul Rubens 100% cotton paper that I reviewed earlier. I feel like the shimmer works best with translucent paints as opaque paints well. obscures some of the shimmer effect okay. and it does flatten itself as it dries. I think he did. I think he did. So we are on day three and layer three of the mud tests for our three different watercolor papers from AliExpress. So generally this is my third and final layer of mud because I figure if I've slathered that much on it and added that many wet layers, it's probably a pretty good sign that I'll be able to do a successful field test on it. So I'm going to go ahead, grab my Da Vinci paint and get to painting. So day three of our Danger Pringle, colors are a bit muddy on this paper, but you can get some nice wet into wet blends and some good diffuse colors. Granulation is decent. I do sort of wish it was bigger and I could get a better idea of how it actually handles if I had a larger size. Generally, it dries pretty flat. Again, I put this one in another room to allow it to dry fully. So for day three of the Paul Rubens Sparkle Paper, paper retains a lot of its crunchy cardboardy feel, maintains good surface texture even when wet. The paper does curl significantly and it definitely needs reinforcement. Colors granulate rather than turning to mud. And again, I moved this one to another room to let it dry out underneath a vent. Our disaster pizza dried all curled and a bit difficult to paint on. The colors already look muddy and desaturated after two layers on this paper. And I'm keeping in mind that this is on top of craft paper, so that would already cause some desaturation with transparent colors anyway. So after I finished applying the paint, I felt like I really don't enjoy watercolor on this paper. It's a lot like painting in a sketchbook. This one might be fun for alcohol markers as I love tone papers with alcohol markers. So I decided to uh, do an alcohol marker and color pencil test at the end of the video.
All right, so we have done three days of mud testing, and I know it definitely looks pretty muddy to you guys, but if you'll recall, I did slather a lot of disparate colors on these papers. So the Paul Rubens Shimmery Shiny Splendid Iridescent Paper performs quite well. I was actually very pleased with it. It did curl up when we saturated it a lot, but it dries flat on its own. I think with a little structural support, maybe some tape on the back, you wouldn't even have to worry about it that much. I cannot capture it on camera, but it does maintain this subtle sparkle despite me absolutely slathering it with paint. And otherwise, it performs a lot like you, I've come to expect Paul Rubin's 100% cotton rag watercolor paper to behave. It loves granulation. It's generally a good paper, and I am really looking forward to doing a field test on this paper. So, I would definitely buy this again. I'd love to see them offer this in a block form or in a round form as well. I, yeah, I could use my Cricut to cut it, but the block form would be handy and it would mean you don't have to provide your own support. This little Danger Pringle here tends to dry fairly flat but it does curl significantly while you're painting it. And frankly, it's kind of small to really get a bead on how well this handles. I had the same problem when I re was reviewing Sennelier's watercolor paper, if you guys will recall. It's 25% cotton. I generally do not like mixed watercolor papers for painting. I actually like them better for inking, like Fabriano's mixed paper is really fun for brush inking and I did a whole bunch of cute non-binary merfolk a while back. I hope you guys will check some of those out if you haven't. Um, you know, I'm kind of iffy about this one. I think it'll do better with fewer layers. I definitely want to try painting on it. I don't think all over coverage is the best fit for this one, but I'm looking forward to field testing this as well. Now, as for our terrible, terrible disaster pizza. This is how it dried. And it really just wanted to buckle and kip all over the place. It is a mixed media paper, but it is lighter than most mixed media papers. This is really slightly heavier than Strathmore's tone tan drawing paper. So I was kind of hoping for something that was more like their tone tan and tone blue mixed media paper, which you guys have seen me talk about here on the channel as well. So I'm a little bit disappointed that there's just not a lot of structure here. It does not really like a whole lot of watercolor. It doesn't have the surface texture for it and it doesn't have the support for it. So I would not be slathering this one with watercolor, but I do want to test this with alcohol marker and with color pencils. So I guess before we go, I gotta get to swatching with alcohol marker and color pencils on the craft paper. Gotta be fair, right? So I bring you guys Ohuhu and Faber-Castell Polychroma. So these are the Ohuhu brush markers. These are alcohol markers. Uh, it might be fun to play around with water-based markers on this as well, but let's save that for another review, right? So I am going to just do some swatches with this. Let me go ahead and open up our very, very classy, must be preserved wrapping. I remove one danger pizza, pop this back in the freezer, pop that back on the floor, and let's start with the alcohol markers. So I was really delighted to find that this paper is actually pretty good for alcohol markers. It's similar to Strathmore's drawing tone tan, but it's not as thirsty as their mixed media tone tan. And I just really love the round format. I am such a sucker for round format papers and I love the tone it brings to these colors. It just kind of unites this color palette. So this could be a good one to use with your alcohol markers.
And if you thought alcohol markers were good on this paper, color pencils, especially the polychromos, which are rich and buttery and saturated, are even more fun. This paper is a mixed media paper for sure, light on the watercolor, but go whole hog with your alcohol markers and with your color pencils. If you have experience with this particular paper and you want to chime in, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. All right, so I've found the right use case for this paper. It's advertised as being a mixed media paper. It is a mixed media paper, but it really likes drier medias a lot. Like alcohol markers, really nice, really vibrant on this paper. It's a lot like Strathmore's Drawing Tone Tan, but it's not as thirsty as their mixed media tone tan. So if you're looking for a tone tan paper that's a little heavier than Strathmore's Tone Tan Drawing Paper, this could be a good fit for you. Color pencils are also super vibrant on this paper. They went down buttery smooth, and while I wasn't really trying to blend or anything, I can definitely tell that this paper and these pencils are going to be friends. So for the field test, I'm definitely thinking mixed media, cause duh, and I'm gonna focus mainly on alcohol markers and color pencils. So I hope you guys will keep an eye out for that. So keep in mind, this isn't a final verdict. There are gonna be field tests for all three of these papers in the near future. This is just a chance for me to see what these papers really seem like they're best lended to so I can focus on that for the field test. I really, really like the Paul Rubens shimmer paper. Would probably buy this again once I use this up. I do like the light shimmer accent and I think it lends itself well towards commission art or art where someone is owning the original piece. For digital art, this is basically wasted because unless you've got the light hitting the paper from different angles, you're really not gonna be able to appreciate that shimmer. But that's true of any shimmer product. This one's a weird one. Uh, field test is just gonna have to tell me how I feel about this. I really like the round format just in general. You guys have seen me use it. This is another one that works better for someone who's gonna have the original rather than online. I like playing around with the Dora Art one and while it makes for good tutorials and good YouTube videos, not so impressive in static photos. So this is something that could be fun to maybe send as a postcard. I'm not sure how I feel about that 25% cotton, not super hot on mixed fiber papers, but perhaps the field tests will help me fall in love with this. I definitely am noticing as we have these side by side. So this is 100% cotton, this is 25% cotton. Similar palette, I use the Da Vinci palette on this. I use the same colors on this. This is so much richer and more saturated than this. Everything on this is kind of faded, kind of muted. And that's one of the reasons I like cotton rag papers is you really get those saturated colors. Whereas with cellulose papers, if you're using watercolor, often you're gonna get more muted, not as vibrant colors because the colors are just sitting on the surface. They're not actually soaking into the fibers. So they're more likely to turn to mud. So this one I'm kind of eh about. I don't know if I would buy this one again. This one is not good for watercolor in my opinion, at least not heavy watercolor. There's just not enough structure there and it is probably 100% wood pulp, but for alcohol markers and for color pencils, this seems like a really fun addition to your studio, especially if you like working in different formats. We've already talked about Strathmore here on the channel several times. I'll link those videos if you guys are interested. Their tone tan paper, they have a drawing paper and they have a mixed media paper. Both are nice. Uh, the mixed media paper is a little thirsty for use with markers. It does tend to be a marker killer. It does tend to drain my markers and it doesn't really have enough surface tooth for it to be fun with watercolor. Um, but this has a surface tooth very similar to the Strathmore drawing paper. So it's a lot smoother. It's not as thirsty a paper and it seems like it's a good fit for alcohol markers and for color pencils. I have not tried it yet with dye based watercolor markers. Let me know in the description below if that's something you guys are interested in checking out and I may revisit this in a vlog with a follow up. 
So before I say goodbye to you guys, I want to talk a little bit about shopping on AliExpress because that's something I do not infrequently here on the channel. When I'm shopping at AliExpress, I'm not just looking for, you know, the cheapest water brushes or the cheapest watercolors. I'm not looking to spend my money on art supplies I know are going to be terrible. When I'm shopping on AliExpress, I'm usually looking at brands I'm already kind of familiar with, like Superior. I've had good experiences with Superior. Like Supervision, I've had good experiences with Supervision. Like uh, Paul Rubens, I've had some really good experiences with Paul Rubens. So I'm usually looking at products that come from manufacturers that are based in China that I'm a little more familiar with. I also tend to buy from two shops. I tend to buy from the official Paul Rubin shop and then there's, it's it's a string of letters. It's Diane V, something like that. Um, I can list it down in the description below. I've bought a lot of superior stuff from them. I've bought paper, a lot of my paper from them and I am happy with their shipping times. I'm happy with how my products are packaged. I'm happy with the quality of the products I receive. I don't feel that I've ever gotten a knockoff from them, but I'm not, on AliExpress looking to buy knockoffs, I'm on AliExpress looking to buy Chinese products for the Chinese market that we don't necessarily get here in the US. Another thing about shopping on AliExpress is I have a friend in the paint box who is based in South America and they just don't have access to many of the brands that are available in the US, but they do have access to different ones. And many US based companies don't ship to South America, but AliExpress does. So they're willing to try products on AliExpress and then talk about their experiences in the paint box, which I am so grateful for because it allows me to cherry pick what products I'm gonna order based on their positive experiences. So um, one final thing, I keep mentioning this because I do think it is important if we're talking about buying things from China, keep in mind that products coming from Asia are going to be more expensive right now due to shipping. Shipping is about to increase. So um, what is usually free shipping or very cheap shipping, that's not going to be such such a great deal anymore. Another thing when I'm ordering these products, I'm actually not looking for free or cheap shipping because usually they, they kind of trick you with that or the, the free products, that's more of a wish thing, free products, they really charge you a bunch with shipping. So you do need to be a savvy shopper. And another thing to consider is the ecological toll ordering things from across the world can have that's kind of a toss up. It would be great if local stores ordered a pallet of these products and then could offer them at a slight markup. When I can, I actually do buy those kind of products at David's Art Center. For example, I've purchased the Mei Liang watercolor palette that I recently reviewed on at David's and I know it's available on Amazon and I know it's available on AliExpress and it's cheaper on both. But I like David so much that I don't mind paying a little bit extra because they have such a wonderful selection of things and often they have better prices than online like with the PWC watercolors. So I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not telling you how to shop. I buy from a variety of places. I love Dick Blick. I do buy from Amazon on occasion and I try to buy from locally owned stores, but that's not always feasible. And sometimes you can find some really great products all the way across the world. Those of you who watch this channel, y'all know I'm a huge fan of Japanese art and stationary products. And a lot of the supplies I have, I either purchased them years ago or I bought them while I was in Japan, one of the two times I've been fortunate enough to visit, or I get them in subscription boxes. I'm starting to feel a similar affinity for Chinese art supplies when they're not, you know, intentional knockoffs. Now, a couple years back, uh, AliExpress had Windsor Newton watercolors and people were speculating whether or not those were knockoffs. And those are neat because those are actually formulated for a Chinese market using Chinese pigments and they're designed to be more opaque intentionally. So they're not knockoffs, they're like a completely different market product. And I think that's really cool because that's something we wouldn't necessarily get in the US in a brick and mortar store unless somebody brought that back for us, you know? So um, 
that's just my two cents. I buy from the same two vendors. I don't take a lot of risks. I'm not looking to buy like Copic knockoffs. Um, I just don't feel like trudging through the waters of fine tool markers like I used to do on the blog. I'm looking for products that I'm going to like that aren't necessarily common in the US and that other people who I trust have already vetted. So those are some pretty specific hurdles, which is why you do see some products from AliExpress, but they're not, that's not the main focus of this channel and it never will be. It's just, there are sometimes some really cool things on AliExpress that haven't quite made it or may never make it to the US market. So uh, on that note, something to look forward to, I have here the Super Vision 12 color palette I'm really excited about. I have some more of these cool granulating watercolors which are made by CAAM. I do believe they're made by Super Vision, yeah. Um, I have some more of these coming in because these are really cool. And I have the Paul Rubens fluorescent watercolors. And all of these are based on recommendations from the paint box or, you know, buying a small set after seeing recommendations on the paint box, really liking it and wanting more of them. Because in the end, with my art supplies, I either have to use them up myself, I have to donate them, or I have to give them to somebody. And I'm just, I'm tired of handling stuff that's bad that's garbage and that's just not fun this is fun when it's innovative when it's different and when it performs the way it's supposed to it's fun and it makes using these products a blast and it makes it so fun to share with you guys so i just wanted to throw in my two cents at the end uh shop with care please do your research read the reviews also if the reviews are like for a totally different product or if they have some legit complaints and another nice thing about aliexpress is often you can choose what country it's shipping from it's usually from russia or from china sometimes it's from poland or from china the reviews will sometimes say i ordered this from russia and it was not what i ordered i ordered this from china and it arrived damaged so you can actually kind of make a more informed decision by reading the reviews. But if the reviews are for a completely different product, don't buy from that vendor. So I will link the two vendors I use on AliExpress. I've had good experiences with them, but I don't communicate with them. Um, we are not any way affiliated or related in any capacity. I'm not vouching for them. I've just had good experiences with them. One third point is that convention artists for a period of time, and I don't know if this has changed after COVID, were ordering washi tape and stickers and other nice convention products on AliExpress from manufacturers. And um, some have had good experiences and some people are reporting that their art gets knocked off and sold without their permission. Um, I have never, I don't speak any form of Chinese and um, but my friend who is Chinese lives in Nashville still. So unfortunately I don't, and she has a child. So I don't know that I would ask her to facilitate negotiating that because I know her, her life is busy. Um, I would not recommend doing that unless you are fluent in Chinese or you have a close friend who has a vested interest in helping you with this. Um, because I've seen it go south many, many times. It's come up on how to be a con artist. It used to come up in uh, Artist Alley Network International. And to me personally, it's just not worth the fight. I would love to see more US and Canada based vendors who offer these kind of services at a reasonable price point because I would feel confident going after somebody legally in that instance. Whereas if it's a manufacturer in China, these kind of issues, while I think that's not legal there, it does happen. So I wouldn't even know how to go about fighting that. So that's my <laughs> tacked on input about shopping using AliExpress. I haven't had too many bad uh, experiences, but I do try to be really careful. And frankly, at this point, I don't buy anything off a of wish anymore. Uh, I have no desire to do wish stuff and I don't even go on Wish anymore. It's mostly just like AliExpress and sometimes Sue Lily. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this 
is it an unboxing swatch if it's paper? This comparative three-way watercolor paper from AliExpress Review. I hope you guys found it useful, helpful, and informative when I can because I actually wasn't able to track down a link for this one. When I can though, I will pop links down in the description below. If you guys enjoyed this video, remember to leave a big old thumbs up. Consider subscribing for more videos similar to this, not always identical to this, but we do a lot of watercolor and drawing content here on the channel. That's Joseph in the background studying Japanese. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope to see you guys again soon. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments below or join me over on the paint box. There'll be a link to that in the description as well. And a final, final point. If you would like a transcript of this video, it's not a perfect transcript, but it is my notes and thoughts. Check the description for that as well. So have a wonderful day, guys. I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Thank you.